Today I'm bringing the question to you, is it time to give up on your natural hair? But before you answer that question, here are eight things to consider. I definitely think we'll all agree on number eight. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Miss Lauren Lee 11. And as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be looking at the argument for and against the question, is it time to give up on your natural hair? And I'm gonna give you pros and cons. Okay, so number one being my biggest bugbear. So this is the con, wash day. Wash day takes forever. It can take so long that it can even last a whole weekend. Although guys, there is a plus side to this. If you wanna look at the glass half full, you can look at it as you are taking extra care, extra caution with your hair. So yes, it may take longer. However, you are doing what it takes to make sure your hair is getting gentle treatment and detangling and shampoo and moisture that it needs number two another issue with natural hair this is one that i have battled with in the past not so much anymore because i've now looked at it on the plus side number two is having to detangle your natural hair now from what i remember when i was relaxed or even when i straighten my hair minimal detangling as your coils and kinks and curls tangle up in one another you're gonna need to separate them to avoid breaking, snapping, and deterring anything that wants to minimize that length. Detangling, yes guys, we can be rough when it comes to detangling, it can take us forever, and then we just get fed up, we wanna rush through it. So the pro is to detangle less. Yes, I said it, detangle less. That is what I do nowadays. So for instance, my hair is in a heatless blowout as I showed you in my last video. But what I do is detangle when it's wash day. Now my hair is full of tangles at my roots. I'm not worried or concerned because when I deal with my hair, I deal with my hair when it's damp. So you can either put a pre-poo treatment on your hair to ease those tangles apart or you can just finger detangle whilst you just spritz your hair with a light moisturizer or just some water. So another bugbear that I found was number three and it is natural hair products are expensive however they do not last even if you don't want to say it, I'll say it for you when I'm using a product on a consistent basis I have to factor in whether this is something I'm going to be buying monthly or bi-weekly because obviously if it is pricey I'm gonna to have to look for an alternative number four this was something I struggled with initially during the beginning of my natural hair journey and it wasn't necessarily going natural from relaxed hair. It was going natural from heat damaged hair. My hair literally was heat trained. So I transitioned from that. And as I let my hair grow and didn't put any heat on my hair, I started to notice at my roots, my curls, my coils, they were tighter. They were more springy. They were more bouncy. They were more shrunken. This was what I call my ugly stage of the transitioning period. It's not nice when you're dealing with two textures. I'm dealing with two textures, more than two textures right now, but it's not It's not on the scale that it was when I was transitioning from heat damage to fully virgin natural hair. Transitioning, yes, it can be hard, but I do suggest guys, if you are transitioning, what got me through it is doing twist outs and braid outs. So my curls would stay uniform. And worst case scenario guys, if you do feel that you can't take it anymore, or if you do feel you've come to a length where you can allow yourself to let go of the damage ends, big chop. And guys, another thing as well, big chop, I'm just digressing here. Big chop doesn't have to be a TWA. A big chop can be from bra strap length to shoulder length if that's your big chop because there's a vast amount of hair to be cutting off. So I was told that when I cut my hair it wasn't a big chop because I had a small little afro and I'm sure there's going to be a for and against what is a big chop really and I'm not interested. All I know is that I cut off a huge amount of hair therefore that was my big chop. I digress. Okay so number five the longer your hair grows the thinner your ends seem to be. Now I did struggle with this initially before I done my big chop. My hair was growing nice and long but my ends were thin and it's because I wasn't trimming as and when needed. Now the recommended time to trim your hair is between six to eight weeks. I don't follow that because it's not one size fits all. It didn't work for me. Keeping in mind they will grow thin because these are the parts of your hair. They're the oldest, they've been through the most. You've got to give them that love and care you know. And if you do want to see how I trim my hair or dust my ends you can watch the video at the end of this video. My little trick is dusting my ends. Anytime I see little fairy knots, some single strand knots, anytime I see knots or I see split ends like the ends are frayed and in that video I, I do show you how to identify when your ends need to be cut if you have curly hair. Anytime I see my ends like that I clip them. 
and I don't clip a whole inch, I don't clip half an inch, I clip the tiniest amount that needs to be clipped because that's all that needs to go. And then once I've done that, I will seal it in with hair grease. And I find that sealing it in with hair grease will help my ends to sustain a lot longer than just putting a cream on top of it. So that's number five. Okay, so number six, protective styling the bane of somebody's life if they don't know how to protective style i.e if you don't know how to cane row if you don't know how to braid in general and it's fine guys there's nothing wrong with that obviously if you do go to get your hair braided by a professional it can become expensive over time and you might just want to be more self-sufficient my pro to this is effectively guys a protective style in my opinion doesn't necessarily have to be plaits braids cane rows what have you this is my protective style a protective style effectively is a style that protects your ends. So my hair is tucked away. And what I do when I put my hair in a bun, I spritz it, seal it, tuck it in, and I leave my hair like that. If I want to, I will take my hair out at night and put it up in a pineapple because it's kind of uncomfortable at times sleeping with a bun at the back of your head. But if you can manage, guys, you just put on your bonnet and keep your hair like this. And then just take your bonnet in the morning. You've got your protective style. Hands are out of your hair. Your ends are tucked away. Protective styling. Okay, so that is number six. Okay, so another thing that I'm kind of dealing with, but it's not actually such an issue to me because of see i've got my barns i've got my protective style i've got my wigs but number seven is when you have long thick hair not even it doesn't even have to be long when you've got thick natural hair it doesn't even have to be thick when you've got natural hair to an extent it covers you in the warmer seasons i.e summer which we kind of didn't have in the uk this year it can be quite claustrophobic i'm not gonna lie i mean having a wash and go in the summer wasn't so bad when i had a little fro or a little bit of shrinkage now my hair's getting bigger so when i had shorter hair this was a problem that i actually wanted to have i was telling myself i can't wait till my hair's that long i will deal with it when it comes to the time i'd think what is she complaining about she's got all that lovely hair i know what she's complaining about now i do she is that one that had the hair that i wanted who was my hair goals yeah however guys there is a solution as your hair grows you manage over time how to deal with each stage i.e when you have a twa when you have shoulder length hair when you have bra strap length hair and when you have waist length hair it doesn't just grow overnight so you know how to manage those styles you know what works for your hair so there is your pro it doesn't matter about having big full voluminous natural hair in the summer because you know how to tuck it away okay guys so before we get on to number eight if you are enjoying this video don't click off now but go and click but go and click on the subscription bar and also click that notification bell so you don't ever miss an upload back to this video number eight all right so this is the one that i mentioned in the intro that i think we can all agree on whether you agree with me or not this is what i'm saying curl patterns i have got numerous different curl patterns now predominantly my hair is a 4a which would be nice if my hair was 4a all round but i have looser parts in the front and i'm not talking about that heat damage that i mentioned in my last video i'm talking about right here at the front when i have my hair out i've got looser curls i've got looser ringlets so that's mostly about a 3a then at the back so half of my head at the back all hair i'd say maybe about a 4b coily and very tightly curled and at the back here near my nape my hair is looser again so maybe about a 3b 3b to 3c and then as i said predominantly the rest of my hair is 4a if you are dealing with this many textures it is very hard to create the style that you are going for so for instance when i do wash and goes i have to do things to manipulate my hair this is the pro i'm giving you now the solution okay the left side of my hair is looser than the right side so the right side if i have a wash and go tends to shrink up and i've got lopsided hair it's not cute so what i tend to do is manipulate it the way i do that is use heat well not now because i haven't been using heat but what i used to do is use heat lightly stretch the curls so they match there's no point in me doing anything on this side because this side doesn't want to play ball it's this side it's got more spring in her step okay and i know that she's going to want to help me out here the back i don't mind i don't mind shrinkage in the back because it's all matching it's not one-sided so if we can all agree number eight is annoying okay so with that being said let me conclude to you I don't think it's necessarily time to give up on your natural hair, guys. There are things you can do. You, if you are fed up with your natural hair, like me at times, throw on a wig, throw on a turban, throw on a head wrap, throw on a bonnet, put your hair away. All right, enjoy your natural hair. Enjoy every step of your journey. However, this is just my opinion. If you want to go relax, do your thing, girl. Go ahead. So anyway, guys, with that being said, that is the end of this video. And if you do want to see how I dust my ends, then you can click this video or if you do prefer to see how i came row for beginners click this video
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.